I can't tell someone, all right, you're going to be a leader and this is how you're going to do it. And these are the steps you're going to follow. What have you learned by looking or admire like other leaders within the, the organizations you've been in? Tough question, I know. Yeah, this is a good one um, because I've learned a lot from observing others. That's probably yeah. how I've learned the most. I never like to hear the phrase, this is how we've always done it. Oh, right. It's uh, like, no, you get, I get like, you're like, no. It <laughs> does not work for me. Yeah. <laughs> is the way that we're doing it the best way or can we move yeah. it? I've learned as well just to say, okay, I know what not to do now if I'm in that situation again. Welcome to Leadership in Manufacturing Podcast. I'm your host, Sana Vinding, and in this episode, I interview Jamie Plank. She's the Director of Supplier Management at Mauser Electronics. Jamie shares her journey from Texas to the UK and her first leadership role, along with key lessons learned. So you want to listen, but there's so much more you can learn. You will learn about the importance of strong communication for global teams, the significance of cultural awareness, including Jamie's initiatives in the UK, and also the role of empathy in leadership. We also discuss building strong supplier relationships, continuous improvement, and the one I love the most is the value of listening. So this episode is filled with practical advice for anyone looking to enhance their leadership skills in the electronics industry. So tune in, join us in exploring global leadership. Enjoy. Welcome to Leadership in Manufacturing Podcast. I'm your host, Sana Vending, and this podcast is designed for professionals in the manufacturing supply chain and the electronics component industry, and is providing insight to enhance your leadership skills. I have a little favor. Please rate us on your favorite podcast platform, or maybe you're watching on YouTube. Yay. Um, and you can also follow us on LinkedIn or Instagram. And please check out our website as well. It's called leadershipinmanufacturing.com. And you can see previous episodes, blog posts, and you could sign up for the newsletter if that's what you want. So today I want to introduce today's guest is Jamie Plank. She's currently the Director of Supplier Management of Mouse Electronics, where she leverages her extensive experience in the electronics distribution industry to drive growth and innovation. Before she joined Mouse, she held a key position at RS Components and Allied Electronics and Automation, where she developed her expertise in customer engagement and product management. With a strong background in electronics, Jamie is passionate about connecting customers with the right solutions to need or to meet their needs and develop them. So welcome, Jamie. I, we've known each other for years, but we never had the time to hang out. So I'm so excited to have you today so we can actually hang out together. Thank you for the invitation to join you. I'm excited to be here. And what a great introduction. Thank you yeah. for that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. No, I know you, right? I follow you. So, but I need to hear, you know, where you, what you've done. So it's always good. So my first question, because I'm so excited myself and hopefully everybody can see the passion, right? But I want to hear, you know, what excites you about the electronics industry? So for me, it's the people. Um, some of the best people that I've met in this industry um, have become some of my closest friends outside of work. So yeah. the people yeah. are kind of where it's at. Also, with the current company I'm with, Mauser, uh, we have a very heavy emphasis on new product introductions or MPI. Yeah. So I'm always excited about just the new products and technologies that are being rolled out. Um, there are a lot of industry trends to keep up with. Yeah. AI, yeah. automation, robotics, miniaturiz yeah. miniaturization, yeah. Um, all the things. So to get to see the innovation and developments that are coming out constantly from our supplier partners, yeah, um, as trends are changing is really exciting. And yeah. it's just fun to be part of an industry that's kind of pushing the boundaries and, of what's possible um, and getting to work with so many talented and passionate people. I love it. I love it. I think it's sometimes it's fun as well with this industry, right? It's everybody sees the end product, but sometimes nobody thinks about what's actually behind it, right? And making sure that everything is connected. Um, yes. So you have, yeah, all the components, the bill of material, you know, everything that just goes goes out. Um, yes, behind the scenes. <laughs> yeah, behind the scenes. Now, let's, um, I want to dive into to leadership style, right? Um, and I want to learn about you and saying, you know, what what does your leadership style, what does that look like? And, and how has it evolved over the years? So I would say that my leadership style is kind of built around trust and transparency. Yeah. Um, I strive yeah. to be as open and honest with my team as I possibly can, because I want them to have all the information that they need to make the best decision in their roles. Yeah. Uh, so communication yeah. is just really key for me, not only sharing information, but listening so that I can learn from my team. Yeah. And then over mm -hmm. time, 
that style has evolved to be a lot more flexible and adaptable. Um, I quickly learned early on that leading people is not a one size fits all approach. Yeah. Um, so yeah. I need to tailor my approach based on each individual's needs um, and just learned the importance also of being open to feedback yeah. um, for yeah. myself uh, and asking for that feedback, continuously trying to improve, you know, my leadership methods, um, asking my leadership to give me that feedback and then not being satisfied with the status quo. Yeah. Um, Cause I'm just, I'm always trying to improve. I'm always trying to learn, adopt that style. Yeah. Um, I am a learner. <laughs> I'm constantly yeah. learning. No, it's, it's fun, right? Cause I think when I went to college, when I was out and got my first job, I was like, Oh, I don't know more. Right. <laughs> I'm done. I'm just now. Yes. <laughs> and now I'm standing here like, I love to learn. <laughs> yes. I've, I've actually gone back to, um, university a, a few times since I yeah. graduated with my bachelor. And after the last time, um, yeah. I, I graduated with my master's in industrial distribution from Texas A&M. Yeah. And my yeah. husband said at the end of that, he's like, can this be it, please? Like, can we be done? <laughs> <laughs> well, like you can continue education in other ways, but can we be done with yeah. going to university? Uh, that's exciting oh i'm proud of you proud of you that's a really good accomplishment um so about the the feedback if i can ask you a little bit about that because i think it's it is so important to get the feedback but it's also Mm -hmm. if there's anything where you're getting some feedback and it starts to be like a little bit personal not that the person maybe that's giving you feedback is making it personal but because mm-hmm. the way we are right you t- you you know the feelings you get in your body right you're like oh my god I, you know that's like a personal attack um yeah. and you just have to take the and saying it's not right it's business and let me let me take my feelings out of it how how yeah. do you do that because some i i'm i'm like in circles around it <laughs> <laughs> well i mean honestly i feel like i've been really fortunate to work for some really great leaders who, when giving me feedback, have been really constructive about it and maybe careful in the way that they delivered it so that I have ne- I really have not felt from a leader personally attacked yeah. by feedback yeah. they've given. Maybe it's made me feel uncomfortable because, oh, no one's ever told me that before. Yeah. Um, yeah. But thank you for bringing it to my attention and, yeah. and letting it be something that I can work on because... Um, ultimately, those are the times in my career that I feel like have made, you know, some of the biggest impacts. Yeah. Because if you if you don't ever get that feedback, if you think that everything yeah. you're doing is great and hunky dory, then I mean, like th- you're, you're not developing. <laughs> <laughs> up here, yeah, I, you're up here. Not touchable. Yeah, no, that's right. So, have you been in places where you didn't get the feedback and you actually had to go and ask for it? Has that happened to you? Um, yes, I have worked for leaders also before that didn't give me feedback and, and made, you know, in my assumption was I must be, I must be just doing everything right because I ask for, um, you know, how, how, how are things going? And I'm not necessarily getting feedback, um, on things I could work on. It's just like, you're doing great. Keep doing what you're doing. Um, and so I feel like um, that situation ha- has helped me as a leader so that when my team's asking me for my feedback and I'm I'm giving it to them um, without them prompting for it. But I, I like yeah. to have that two way communication and have things that, you know, I've observed that, hey, this you, you do all these things. Great. Let's let's work on this thing over here. Yeah. Um, we can be even better. So. Yeah. I like that. I also like, and I think that when I'm hearing it, you you can you can uh, you jump in on that one. But I also think you don't wait for that six months review, right? Have the conversation. Never. Yeah, never, right? Don't sit and say, yeah. "Oh, I can only give that like in two months, right?" We have to wait for that feedback. <laughs> Grab it right there uh, is so important because I think yeah. that helps, and it helps. It helps the whole. It also helps the company culture, right? And your team culture as well of how you work together. One hundred percent. Yeah. The the feedback needs to be happening um, on a regular basis. I'm a fan of having one on ones with everyone on my team on a regular basis, Um, depending on how big my team is there. There were times when I was leading, you know, a pretty large team and we were virtual for most of the week. So checking in at least 30 minutes with each person on the team was 
very time consuming, yeah. but it was also the most important thing. Cause if I wasn't having that, you know, yeah. little 30 minute check-in with them, then I didn't know what was going on in their, you know, day to day, um, and couldn't be on top of issues yeah. that they're facing. Yeah. So yeah. that's kind of been something that I have taken from previous leaders that I've worked for yeah. and implemented yeah. myself and made sure that, um, I prioritize that. Yeah. I, I like that. I also think it's important to check in as much as, of course, with the with the business relationship you have with your employees, but know a little bit about the personal background, right? Because then you also understand if there is anything critical going on, if there's like a deadline, you know, you can you have time to 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 navigate through that together with with your team. Um, yes. So it's uh, it's that transparency and, and communication, as you just mentioned, right? Which is really and trust. Which is really important. Absolutely. Yeah. Let's uh, let's let's talk about customers because uh, you that's what you said in the beginning, right? You love you know people aspect here as well. So yes. how do you um you know how do you balance right? Because I'm sure you have different demands, right? Because you need you have to have your customer satisfaction and you also have your suppliers. How do you make sure that that's in balance? So I would say that. My main goal, um, and in this business, I think everyone's main goal should keep to be to keep the customer at the heart of everything that you're doing. Yeah. Um, so in my role in supplier management, I focus on understanding what the customer's looking for, what are their expectations from us as a distributor, um, whether that be the types of products that they need or the quality they expect, or even the level of content and resources that they're going to require to make the best buying decisions. Yeah. And then take all of that and then ensure that we're working with the best suppliers and yeah. manufacturers yeah. to help meet those customer expectations. Um, I feel like in the role that I'm in today, building those strong relationships with suppliers is a main priority. Yeah. Um, and one of the things that I enjoy most about my job and, and this world that I, I get to work in. Yeah. Um, so it's important that we're engaging with the right manufacturers, the ones that are making quality products, standing behind that quality, responsive yeah. to the customer's yeah. needs. Um, and then on our end, just making sure that we understand what those suppliers' capabilities and constraints are. Yeah. Um, and yeah. aligning those strengths to the customer's needs. Yeah. So the combining here, right? Because with your leadership approach or how you, yeah, your style, right? Do you, do you, Put that out as well and embrace, you know, your customers with that kind of, of, your, of your leadership style. Because again, if you're building the relationship within your team, and which you are, what you need to do, right? But yeah. you also need to build this, right? To have this trust with your, with the suppliers. So what's, what are some of your uh -huh. tricks, yeah. best practices <laughs> share anything? Yeah. So, I mean, I mentioned before that on my team, um, from a, from a leadership perspective that Communication and transparency are really important. Yeah. So yeah. that's just as important on the supplier side um, and building the relationships with supplier, having that regular communication, being open and as transparent as you can yeah. um, to help prevent issues before they arise and make sure that, you know, we're both on the same page. Yeah. So I think that's important to implement on, on yeah. both sides of it. But sometimes it sounds easy, right? <laughs> <laughs> it sounds easy. Sometimes it is, and sometimes yeah. it's not. And sometimes it's not. Yeah, no, it's it's right, right. That's the, the, all the disruption that's happening in the world, uh, but but still navigating through that and and just making sure that you are getting where you want it to be. So I like that. Um, what about technologies? Because I think over the last years, right, how we communicate if you're in, you know, in the office, if you're hybrid or if you're remote, I'm sure you have, even if it's suppliers, right, or if it's your team, you know, you have different ways you need to communicate. So how, how has that skill set to be able to embrace, right, the way we're working? How has that changed you as a leader? Um, I mean, I think it's made me be more adaptable and um, kind of come to the table with how the supplier or how the team um, needs to, to how we need to approach it that day yeah. or in the yeah. moment. Um, obviously, over the last few years, Zoom and, and, and virtual meetings have become very prominent. Yeah. Um, but also, over the last few years, we have been able to to be in front of each other more often. Um, so I like that combination. Yeah. Um, of, of 
being face to face, um, building relationships. I think building relationships and being able to do that in person is very important. It's very hard to do if if you don't have that layer. Yeah. Um, but I also appreciate the flexibility that being able to do what we're doing right now yeah. offers. Yeah. Um, because the other thing that's really important to me is is work life balance and making sure that you know I've got time to spend with my young family and and all the things that we've got going on on our side. So being able to have a 30 minute session to cover with a supplier on, on something really important, um, what doesn't require a a flight (laughs) and a hotel stay is uh, very important. Yeah. Yeah. I, I agree with you. It's, it's good to see that the world has changed, um, how to have that work. Um, life balance. Um, it's not every company, of course, and it's not every, of course, profession that you can say it, right? It's not that the doctors can say, now you can only work from home. <laughs> it all depends. Um, so so definitely, I, I like that. But, so, and also, how how often do you then meet with, with your team um, where you're like face-to-face? Is that every week that you're all together or is it every month? You know, how often do you, are you together? So with the company that I'm currently with, Mauser, um, we are all based in the Dallas-Fort Worth area in Texas. Yeah. So yeah. it's nice because my whole team is is local and we go into the office three days a week and then working from home two days a week. So we have that balance. Um, yeah. The company yeah. that I was with previously at RS, it was similar, you know, yeah. based in uh, the Dallas-Fort Worth area. My whole team was local. We yeah. went in two days a week. So yeah. Both yeah. both companies have adopted a hybrid approach. Um and I really in, in all of my leadership journey, I've always had that face-to-face time when I was based in the UK. Yeah. Um before we we went hybrid or went remote at all. Yeah. So it was five days in the office. Yeah. Um, but getting to have that face-to-face time with my team has always been yeah. um yeah. something that I've appreciated. Yeah. It's that's just another dynamic, right? When you meet, it's it's it, you need to have uh, if it's not every week, right? But you still need at a certain point to have this cadence. Uh, what what I like about the being a mix of of the remote and being in the office is that you have the dynamic, right? If you go to the meetings, right, you have the chit chat before that you start the meeting in the conference room. You have the chit chat after. Uh, it's not happening in the same way when when you are virtual, but you can also be more connected on the virtual, right? Because as you just said, you know, then you have to travel, you have to get a hotel, right? It takes a lot longer if you need to go somewhere. Um, yes. So I think mixing it and finding that right balance is a great way and efficient, uh, which I like. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's it's a good way. So maybe we have more touch point uh, because sometimes you can also just die in long emails, right? When you're saying, okay, just cut it, right? We're not adding more people to this email. Let's just... Um, you know, let's just have jump on this quick call and then yes. out what need to find out, you know, write down these are the tasks, who's the ownership, right? And then you go from there. So yeah, um sure. yeah. So technology I think has has helped us a, a really long way. So I wanna talk a little about because you just mentioned right as well, right? That you you were in, in UK. So has there anything on leadership and the company, you know, like the culture? So I know we're talking about company culture, but now I'm like talking about culture of where you're living, who you're working with and where people are from. So any leadership advice or what you've seen or observed, you know, now that you've been working in UK and now back to US? Yes. Um, So I feel like um, the two most important things that I needed when I made that transition was strong communication. Yeah. um, And then to build cultural awareness. Um, So prior to, to going over to the UK, I was in Texas for the majority of my life and, and all the business dealings were typically with it, with people in the U S. Yeah. So, um, communication obviously is important any, any time, yeah. uh, no matter where you are, but when you're working for a global company, um, when you're working with people from, you know, all over the world in different countries, you've yeah. got to be able to be clear and effective with your communication so that everyone's on the same page, um, regardless of where they're at. And yeah. then from a cultural awareness standpoint, um, you just have to be aware so that you can understand and respect different perspectives. Yeah. Um, so you can make the best decisions and build relationships. Um, something cool that I, I was able to do when I did move over uh, to the UK was um, 
helped create content for a cultural awareness program. Nice. Uh, it was I started kind of in the works before I got there. And then I got to jump in and get my hands dirty and, and help create some of the, the different um, videos that, and, and things that we were working on. But we worked with people from all over the world and just about every major country. Um, you have to learn the different nuances and norms of each of those countries um, on how to communicate effectively and understand what, what is and isn't culturally acceptable. Yeah. So that was initially a, a big challenge for me. Um, and I'm always still learning, but it's honestly been one of the most rewarding skills I've picked up during my journey yeah. in the industry. Um, just because I love people. I loved forming relationships with people from a completely different background than mine from around yeah. the world. Yeah. I, I really like that. I also think by moving right from one to a totally other country, um, the memories, right, and the impressions you're getting, and then also the, that creativity, creativity that you're you're then providing in these different projects, uh, that has yeah. just you know like a memory for life. Um, oh, for sure. So, and yeah. for my whole family, my whole family came with me and got yeah. to experience that with me. So, um, yeah, we've got some great stories to tell, some some great travels, and then you know, from a business standpoint, a lot of lessons learned. That was actually. Um, my first role in leadership. So, yeah. hey, move move to a new country and lead people for <laughs> the first the time. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I think it's that's awesome, right? Because sometimes you also need to, I don't know if the word is to jump, right? But just to, to say, yes, I'm totally in, right? And then pick up and learn and make sure that you even have, you know, mentoring ship, right? Or you find out who to look up to or who to ask so you can actually be that best leader in, in that environment. So I, I think that's just that's just an amazing story uh, on that. Thank you. If you have to look on, on other leaders, right? And you, it's not that you have to mention a name or something, but I just wanted to know, have you, what have you learned by, by, by looking or admire like other leaders within the, the organizations you've been in? Hmm. Tough question. I know. Maybe, I don't know. Could it be communication style or is it how to, to lead a oh. meeting or okay. is there anything that no, I think this, yeah, this is a good one. Um, because I've learned a lot from observing others. That's probably yeah. how I've learned the most. Yeah. Um, so it's hard to narrow it down. Um, I've seen a lot of things that I want to do. Yeah. And I've also seen a lot of things that I don't want to do yeah. with Which my team. Important, right? Right? Those are yeah. equally it's, important. Yeah, <laughs> it is. Yeah. Um, but two of the best lessons that I think I've learned are the importance of being adaptable yeah. and also being an empathetic leader. Yeah. So um, I've gotten to watch how leaders have managed and navigated big changes um, yeah. in an organization by being open to new ideas uh, and being flexible and kind of how they approach that. Yeah. Um, I mentioned earlier, I'm not a step fan of the status quo. So uh, watching and learning from leaders on how to navigate teams through changes um, yeah. and challenging the way that things work is pretty important. I, I never like to hear the phrase, this is how we've always done it. Oh, right. It's uh, like, I know you that. Get, I get like, you're like, no, <laughs> that does not work for me. Yeah. <laughs> Is the way that we're doing it the best way or can we improve yeah. it? Yeah. Um, so I always want to stay open and adaptable. And then um, that I, I've also learned that the value of connecting with people on a personal level um, and kind of understanding their motivations yeah. and, and trying to create that collaborative culture. Yeah. Um, because I've observed leaders that have zero empathy yeah. and I've watched their teams just crumble and fall apart yeah. um, with no respect from either side. So yeah. Luckily, I've, I've also gotten the flip side of that. I've gotten to watch leaders who have just the right amount of empathy and the difference in cultures within those two teams is like night and day. Yeah. So yeah. I feel like that's something I've picked up from watching others is I like you've got to be empathetic. Yeah. yeah. I'm always, I'm taking notes. If I'm meeting anybody, even, you know, if it's not within the company, right? If I meet somebody, they're saying, oh, I just went to my daughter's or my son, something, something. I'm like, oh. You know, I'm writing down, they have kids, you know, they have a dog, they have, you know, because <laughs> it's so good to later on, if it's a couple of months later, if it's 
just within the industry to say, oh, how did that go, right? Because people are like, oh, you remember, right? And then you yes. easier to build them. Like, yeah, it, it means <laughs> that because it means a lot because it actually means that you listened as well, right? And is that exactly. you are human. Um, so I, I really like that you're saying that that's, you know, looking at, as leaders of what to do and what not to do. <laughs> it's important. Mm-hmm. I think when I look at my career as well, I I can look back um, and and say, oh, I know how I, re- I reacted at a certain point and I should not have reacted like that. I should have waited, right? And then the next day I should have come back and saying, okay, you know, let's, let's, then, let's talk about it. So I think in the, being in the hot seat sometimes <laughs> um, is, you, you also learn for that. So you, you learned, I've learned as well, just to say, okay, I know what not to do now if I'm in that situation again. So it's, um, yeah. yeah. But we, as you just said, right, we, we keep, we keep learning. So how you, with, with your team, right. Cause you have like amazing, I think, you know, how you view what is a good leader. How do you make sure that you are creating or developing good leaders? Um, I feel like having those, uh, regular catch ups with your team and understanding, you know, what their needs and goals are, um, in their careers. Yeah. Um, and and giving them kind of ideas and and, and encouragement to um, go and pursue the things that are going to help them develop whatever whatever the skill is that yeah. they need to develop to go and and be a leader. Um, I think that's you know one of the things that I learned over the the last few years is, though is that I can't um, tell someone, all right, you're going to be a leader, and this is how you're going to do it, and these are the steps you're going to follow. Yeah. It yeah. has to be you know, someone that's taking ownership of that for themselves yeah. and really driving, yeah. you know, what that looks like for them. And then I'm just there to help, you know, facilitate and encourage and yeah. and and point them in the right direction when they're running into, you know, challenges or, or, yeah. or hitting a wall yeah. um, and, and help try to open doors for them. But yeah. ultimately, you know, I, I think it's really important for, every individual to kind of own what that looks like for them. Yeah. So that's why I encourage my team to do. Yeah. I like that. And, uh, and also by having that conversation, right. I'm sure to say, you know, if they want to grow and become a leader or have more responsibility or whatever that looks like. So you're sure yeah. that both you and your employees know, you know, what that path looks like. So it's back to yes. that communication. And, and also those employees that don't necessarily want to be in leadership yeah. because yeah. Not everyone does, and that's okay. That's that's good yeah. that not everyone is 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 yeah. going for the same thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it's it goes the same for those that just want to develop in the roles that they're in, or want to develop into different roles in the future. It's it's the same kind of theory. Yeah, way. no, I like it. Um, so, how do you know if you are a good leader? We talked a little bit about feedback, but I want to ask you know deeper on how do you know that you are actually are a good leader. Oh, um, I would say, I mean, you're, you're getting feedback from your team. If your team is performing, your team is, is meeting the goals of the organization and um, doing the things that, um, that they need to do to, to be successful. I think that you can say that you've done a good job. If your morale is good on your team and you've, you've created that culture where people want to come to work and they want to be a part of um, you know, what you're selling, yeah. then you'll like, those are all pretty positive signs that yeah. you're doing all right. Yeah. I like it. I had at one time I had one was somebody was in another team and they were like, I want to be in Santa's team. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh. <laughs> I, I took that as a compliment. <laughs> yes, I agree. I think that, I think that says a lot. Yeah. Um, because we've all worked in places where you see teams that don't have the cohesion. They don't um, enjoy what they're doing. They are not enjoying the people they're working with. Yeah. Um, and you yeah. definitely say, I don't want to work over there. So yeah. You want to create that environment that people want to be a part of. And I love that. That Yeah. No, it was, I was that's like, the kind of team that you're leading to. <laughs> <laughs> it was fun. No, I was proud of that day. No. Um, okay. So I want to ask again here to say, you know, if you have to look back, right. If and you can take it's 10 years or it's 15 years, but if you want to look back and give yourself an advice, what, what advice would you have given yourself? Um, 
I would probably say to listen more than you speak. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think that one of the the things early on that I had a challenge with was um, that I was kind of a distracted listener. So I'd be trying to multitask, um, yeah. check emails, maybe check my, I, I got a text on my phone, something popped up. Um, so instead of truly being, you know, in that conversation and giving my undivided attention and, and, and not listening to respond, but just listening to learn, um, that's something I wish that I would have started earlier on in my career. Um, yeah. and then, um, I think embracing change uh, through, you know, the last probably seven years, really, uh, since yeah. I've become a leader, there's been a lot of change that I've been a part of in organizations, whether it's, you know, reorganizations, um, name changes, all of all of those things, you know, people on my team changing on yeah. a, a pretty regular basis. Yeah. Um, I, I feel like I've always been a fan of change um, in my personal life. Yeah. But from a from a company perspective and in in, in in this world, um, it can be intimidating. Yeah. Um, but what I've learned over the years is that it's an incredible opportunity for growth. So yeah. I would tell myself yeah. to embrace the change. Yeah. Yeah. I, I I like that. I also think with with change that some sometimes it gives new new possibilities, right? To be creative or create something which will then turn into growth. But Sometimes yes. in the moment, right? You have to have that positive hat on. <laughs> um, and sometimes it's not easy. And it's I think that's totally understandable. But I, I like that you're saying, yeah, the the focus and and actually listen is is really important. I think you hit me there with, with a few things. <laughs> so um okay, if there's any of the listeners that, that wants to reach out to you, how can they connect with you? Um, you can find me on LinkedIn. Um, Jamie Plank and, um, yeah, you can that's easy. email me. I've, I can give my email address if, if, if it's that's totally okay, up, but no. Yeah, no, I, I yeah. can, let me just link, you know, put your link to LinkedIn on the, uh, on the show notes. And I will also put it on the episode page on leadership and manufacturing.com. Let's keep it that because then nobody will yes. pick it up and put too many, like it. <laughs> too many <laughs> newsletters and add you to everything. Right. You don't want that. So, Jamie, I, I really like this. I was like, why have we done this before? Even though with no maybe no <laughs> podcast, right? I think just connecting and talking about what, what is leadership and, and what it's done to you. And I, I love that you started with the trust and the people, right? It's it's so important. And the whole, I think, where I was like just saying, yes, yes, was like where you said, I learned from leaders of what they've done, what what you liked that they were doing, but also took notes of what they did that you didn't like, or maybe you could see that didn't work, right? I think that's so important as well, because you need to you need to be critical thinking. I think that's maybe the word for that, so to learn that. So thank yeah. you so much. I learned a lot, so thank you so much. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. I enjoyed the conversation, and I learned, learned just as much from you. So I love I love the podcast, and I love what you're doing with this project. Thank you. Thank you for joining us for another episode of Leadership in Manufacturing podcast. I love that you're listening. Please find us on YouTube and wherever you get your podcast, and be sure to subscribe and rate us. Also, follow our LinkedIn page and Instagram and check out leadershipinmanufacturing.com for previous episodes, blog posts, and our newsletter. So let's continue this journey together to become better leaders in the electronics industry. Remember, stay curious, keep learning. See you next time.